Hello everyone, my name is Gang. Welcome to my another video. I hope you guys are doing great. I am so excited today because I'm gonna flip the fiber drum from this to this. Now I don't see this one yet because I am filming right now here. I but I think it's gonna be something something cool. Let's talk it about the fiber drum a little bit. I got it from Facebook Marketplace, only 60 Thai baht, just around two dollars. Pretty cheap, right? It's 18 inch tall and 15 diameter, open head, metal lock ring with wooden top and bottom. Sorry, I don't know how many gallon this one. It's a medicine shipping container, obviously. I know lots of people use it as a stool, storage, side table, nightstand, kind of vintage industrial vibe. There are many ways to flip or redo, repurpose it, but I think I'm gonna make it up a little bit more interesting. I got inspired by Chester. Hey Chester, if you're watching this, I am your big fan. Anyways guys, he's a pro. I learned a lot of things from his video. You guys should check it out his channel. My favorite one is an Everita armchair. I will put his link down below. I'm so into it. So sexy to me. This type of thing kinda turned me on. I want one and I did check on the market. They are so freaking pricey. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get the Everita style to this project. Finger crossed though. We'll see. I will do my best. Let's get into it. So what I'm gonna do to this project is just wrapping it with aluminum sheet and rewetting them to get an Everton wipe to it then do the cushion sitting up on it, that's the idea So I get started this thing with the aluminum sheet It's a flashing one for the roofing I guess You can get it from any local hardware stores I measure at 9 inches wide as a fiber drum is 18 inches tall in total and I'm gonna wrap only the cardboard sections which is I just spread wrapping it upper and lower so 9 inches is enough You need a heavy duty shears for that but I use my pruning scissors It works though This sheet is quite thin but better wearing gloves anyways I don't know how many pieces to wrap it all over to be honest so I just cut some more just in case Next, I'm cutting them around 18 inches. No need to be 18 actually. I just need to cut half half and this half is 18 so. Because some part of them gonna be covered by each other anyway. Now it's the wrapping part. I just put on an aluminum sheet to the drum. I'm gonna do the bottom row first. So I use staple gun, just stapling only one side. Then I put another sheet on it to cover up the stapling part of the first one and then stapling the same way I did to the first sheet You see what I do here? The stapling gonna be covered by another sheet over and over So I use only 3 pieces to run this one Now I'm making 4 dots by 1.5 inch from the bottom side Then I'm gonna use a hammer tapping on a screwdriver to the dot to make the place on an aluminum sheet to get ready for drilling And I use 2.5mm drill bit for this one This is the rivet. If anyone haven't seen before, it looks like a tiny sword. I use a smallest size for this job by the way. And this is a rivet gun for attaching the rivet. I never done this before. Wish me luck then. So what I do is just put the short side of the rivet to the hole. And then get the rivet gun to it. This is how it works. The rivet is not gonna break right away the first time you pop the gun. So you have to squeeze it in and out a couple of times till it pops the excess out. It's quite take a lot of time and need pressure to it So you better turn your music on Get a nice coffee Make sure your tummy is full Because doing this a hundred times would kill your mood That happened to me though I also have to rewetting the bottom line so Let's go fast forward Now the lower part is done You see it has some scars I just mess it up It's a part of the DIY right? It's not that bad in overall actually Moving on to the upper part At first I want to put the aluminum sheet in the same direction as the lower one But after I made many scars down there So I don't mind that for now I just doing randomly And I also cut off an inch in some sheet To make it more interesting The only thing that bothers me is to rewetting. It's just like never end But here it is the body part is done Now 
Now it's time to do topping. I'm starting by create quarters of this wooden top. Then I'm marking at 4 inches on above and below and 5 inches to the side. Then I measure at 3 inches to the both side of above and below. I mean vertical line. Don't know how to describe that. So yeah, I got 7 rooms to put a button on. For tufting the cushion, that's why. And then I use 3mm drill bit, drilling through all of them. Next step, I use a super glue, just gluing down all over the wooden surface. And I put a half inch thick seat foam to it. Then I glue down again and put some more another layer. Then three more, four more. Okay, I'm about to run out of the glue. And five more. It would be easier to use a thicker foam, but I don't have one right now, so. Then I'm gonna use a cutter, cutting off all the excess piece by piece. And I also cutting off the edge to make a curvy shape. This is really fun to do. Now I use a big sewing needle, pushing through the hole underneath, just to make it through the top. And I use a marker, marking on the foam in every hole. Then I use a plastic bottle cap as a cutting guide to make a hole a little wider. And I just only cut two layers from the top to all of them. Hmm, it looks yummy in somehow, like a big butter cheese cake. Next, I'm gonna wrapping up the foam with polyester batting. Actually, I don't know why we have to do that, but everyone does it, so could be something. So I use a stepper gun, stepping on the side all over, and then I cut off the excess. Now I'm gonna make a button for tufting. I use a normal button with a plastic rope. So what I do is just get a plastic rope through the button hole and looping back to the hole next to it and I tie this up tightly. Then I cut a small piece of leather, it's a 4-1. Just wrapping up the button and use a plastic rope looping around it, then tie up super super tightly. And I cut off the excess as well. This is how it looks, and I'm gonna make 7 of it. Now it's covering time. This is a faux leather I left from another project earlier. Thank god it's enough. First, I have to find a center of the cushion to do tufting. So I put a plastic lobe of the button through the needle eye. Then I just pushing the needle through the center hole and trying to get it through the bottom as you can see. And then I take a needle off. So now you have to use your muzzle pulling the rope as tight as you can to get the button going deeply. Then I use stepper gun, stepping the rope to get the button stay in place. Then flip the rope over and stepping some more to secure it's not gonna go anywhere. Now the first one is done. Not bad. And then I'm gonna do the rest. The thing is, you have to pull in as much as you can. You can check it out by pushing the button down. If it's still moving, that means it can go deeper. For the edge, I'm just pleating the leather right from the tufted button, stretching really tight and flip it over, then stapling it on the side. And I'm gonna work in small section all around it. Then I'm cutting off the excess. Now it's almost done. You can see I missed some part of it. Maybe I stretch it too much, or maybe because I don't have enough leather. It's not wide enough at the first place, or maybe both. Last but not least, I use my black velvet fabric cover up on the side as a finishing touch, like a cambric dust cover for furniture. So it's just folding under and step a quarter first. Then I cut off the excess 
and run stable around it. Guys, this is like the moment of truth. Here we go. One, two, three. Yes! I can't believe that. It's way beyond what I think it's gonna be. It turned out so dope. Take a look. Alright guys, please stay tuned, I'm gonna do more another Aviator series for sure. Be safe, be kind to each other, thanks for watching guys, see you next one, bye!